In this session, we're going to import GIS terrain data into Grasshopper using the DocoFoser plugin. DocoFoser is available on Food for Rhino. Go ahead and download it. It also has code and documentation on GitHub, and there's a paper published on it in the Journal of Digital Landscape Architecture titled Computational Terrain Modeling with Distance Functions for Large-Scale Landscape Design. So a quick overview. We'll import the terrain data as an ASCII XYZ point cloud. We're going to move it from geographic space to the local origin of our scene and convert it from a regular grid to a mesh for previewing. We will also compute the vector flow field so that we can visualize how droplets of rainwater would flow across the landscape. To get started, we're going to export data from GIS. You could do this in either ArcGIS or free open source GIS, including QGIS and GrassGIS. I'm going to use GrassGIS for this. I'm going to open Grass, and it will pull up the Grass startup screen. The first thing you need to do is set a Grass database directory. By convention, this is usually called Grass data. Download um, from the comments section of the video, download You'll see a download list for the sample data set. Download that, extract it, and place it in the grass data folder. It should show up here as Louisiana South State Plain Meters Hilltop as a location. Inside of it, it contains a map set by default called permanent. This is a reference map set. So start the grass session. And two windows will come up, a layer manager and a map display window. In the layer manager, you can add multiple maps with this button. Um, you can select if they are the map type. I'm going to pick raster and the permanent map set. And I'm going to select elevation and imagery. Imagery shows the orthophotograph of the site. It is captured from a survey by drones, by a drone, a DJI Phantom 4 Pro. You can see the ground control points placed across the landscape. A digital elevation model at 10 centimeter resolution was computed from the imagery in Agisoft Metashape using the structure from motion technique. We're going to export this as a XYZ point cloud for use in DocoFoser and Grasshopper. So to do this, we'll go to File, make sure it's selected, go to File, Export Raster Map, ASCII XYZ point export. The command is r.out.xyz, which could be entered in the command console here. The name of the input map under the required tab is elevation, and this is saying it's in the permanent map set. Optional, we need to set an output file location. I'll browse and place this here at named elevation.xyz. And you could also name it .txt or .csv, because I'm going to set the field separator to comma comma separated values. I also need to check overwrite because I've already exported this once and then we run it. Now we're ready to import this into Grasshopper. Start a new document and make sure you have DocoFoser installed. If you don't have it installed yet, go to File, Special Folders, Component Folder, before you unzip it, you may want to right-click, 
go to security settings and unblock it, unzip it, and then place it here in the components folder. And if you need it, um, restart Rhino and Grasshopper. And it should show up. The tab should show up here. In the tab, we're going to start in IO input output by importing the XYZ points. I'll place import XYZ component here. The input we need is a file path. So I'm going to type in file path, place a file path parameter, connect it. I'm going to right click on file path and set my elevation.xyz file. It's quite large, so it'll take a second. There we go. Now we can't preview this yet. We need to visualize it as a mesh to do that. What DocoFocer does is it reads the terrain data, which is coming from a raster, and it's going to make it as a regular grid, very much like the raster, and it'll be a regular grid in a list format. This can be very computationally efficient for um, terrain modeling operations. There are, for example, cut and fill operations here that can be done in DocoFocer. So to visualize this, we're going to go to geometry and make a grid mesh. I'll connect the DocoFocer list as the input for the grid mesh. And our grid mesh is not at the origin of our scene. It's floating somewhere in geographic space. So I'm going to click on the middle mouse button and right click on the magnifying glass to zoom extents of all viewports. And then I can see my nice terrain mesh here. To now move this to the origin, I am going to go to the grid panel and pick grid shift. This will shift it from geographic space to the local origin. So I'll plug in the list and I'm going to put that into the grid mesh. And the gr mesh will move back to the origin of my scene. I'll right click in Rhino, middle mouse button click in Rhino and right click on the magnifying glass to zoom all extent. Now I can see my mesh here at the origin, my terrain mesh. We're going to add a custom preview here. So custom preview to better visualize this. I'll then add a material of color swatch. And before moving on, I'm going to add just a little bit of documentation to this. I'm going to Hide all of these by clicking on the middle mouse button and disable preview. I'm then going to group this, right click and title it import XYZ terrain data. And I'm going to add a scribble or two for documentation. So this scribble I'll make a note that I'm using DocoFocer as a plugin. Set a relatively small font size and change the font to something better. I'll use Sega. I'll add this and add it to the group just above the component using DocoFocer. I'll make another scribble as a nice big title here big font size, say 36, terrain model. Now that this is looking good for a start, I'm going to add another section. We're going to do terrain analysis, compute a vector flow field. So I'll go ahead and copy this and rename it. So. For our terrain analysis, we're going to go to the grid operations. Um, first of all, analysis. 
we're going to pick um, slope vectors. This is what we want to start to visualize. But before we can compute this, our surface is very high resolution and we'll see far too many vectors. So we want to lower the resolution and then smooth it. It's rather bumpy from all the grass that we've captured at such high resolution. So we're going to also smooth. So grid, we'll first filter the grid to reduce the resolution. Then we're going to smooth that grid. That'll be our input here. So our input into the grid filter is going to be our uh, shifted grid list. So I'll plug that in. And um, then I need to set the resolution here. First, I'll hide the wire display. And I'm going to add a number slider. I'll double click on it, set this, at, name it something like resolution, make it integer. I'll make the max something like 30. I'm going to set my resolution to, say, 10. Oops. And I'll plug that in here. Now, for grid smooth, um, this is going to be um, smoothing with a 2D Gaussian convolution kernel, so I need a radius for it. I'm going to set the radius to about 2 and plug that in. Now, I'll connect this to my slope vector, and I'm going to compute the vectors over the filtered, smoothed um, terrain grid. Now, before we can really visualize this, we need to um, add a few more components. We're going to have a display vector, and um, we need um, We need grid points um, from DocoFocer. So under geometry, there's grid points. This will convert the DocoFocer list, grid list, into a point cloud. So I'll take the smoothed grid here and plug it in as the grid points. And this will give um, points for the uh, slope vectors to be anchored on. I'll connect that in here as my anchor and the slope in, slope vector in as the vector. Now I can go ahead and hide all of these and visualize my vector flow field. Now um, I need to reverse the direction of the flow field so before I connect this, I can either right click on the vector and go reverse, or I can add a reverse vector component here. I'll finish by grouping this and naming the group vector flow field. That completes this uh, session.